What up crowdfunders, welcome back to the crowdfunding demystified YouTube channel and on this channel we get into how to launch a successful Kickstarter or Indiegogo campaign and in today's video I'm walking you through step by step how to create your own Indiegogo campaign. hundred percent would recommend going on Indiegogo.com and checking out some of the other projects that are out there. Um, the types of phone accessories, the types of travel and outdoors equipment, um, audio products, etc. And th the reason why you want to do this, the reason why you want to explore some of these cool new projects, um, and particularly the ones that are going to be in the category that you're going to launch in, is because you want to get a feel for what's doing well. So if this project has raised you know, six figures, Get a sense of the video. How does the video look? How does it feel? Um, how long is it? What, what kind of layout do they have here in terms of their actual campaign? Are they using lots of images? You know, how do they word this? How long is it? What kind of rewards are they offering, etc.? This is going to be invaluable um, research when you are getting started. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to sign up for an account on Indiegogo. Now you can enter your name and email. Um, you could also, if you want to create an account with Facebook, just for the ease of things, we're going to create an account with my my. Facebook here, it automatically creates an account. And then to get started, we're just going to click start a campaign. Now, when you're starting a campaign on Indiegogo, you can do two different types of raises. Number one is you can raise money for a cause. A cause is if you're trying to raise money for education related costs, travel expenses, memorial funds, uh, medical bills, you're going to want to use their um, GoFundMe, you know, which is kind of like a partner with Indiegogo. They used to have uh, another platform called Generosity. So now they're partnered with GoFundMe. So you're going to want to use GoFundMe for this. If you're trying to create a, a, a project, an entrepreneurial or technology gadget or a gizmo and trying to bring that to life, then you're going to want to create a traditional project. So we're going to use that today because I have another video actually on how to create a uh, GoFundMe campaign. So the first part of starting a campaign is deciding how much money you want to raise. Now, going back to our research here, um, you might think that if you're going to try it, you need, let's just say, uh, $100,000. You would love $100,000 and, and raise money for that project. Like That would be incredible. That would mean the world for you. Um, unfortunately, that's not kind of how crowdfunding works. The way that crowdfunding works is you want to set as low a goal as possible, literally as low as possible, and that you can hit as soon as possible, but that is also realistic. So I'll get into that in just a little bit. For this project, the one we were looking at earlier, this had a $10,000 fixed goal, meaning fixed means all or nothing. They have to hit or exceed this goal in order to receive the funds that they are raising. Now I'll get into that in a little bit, but um, the difference between fixed and flexible, but basically they ended up raising over 10X their overall fundraising goal. And this is very normal. With, with crowdfunding campaigns, you're not just hitting your goal, you're exceeding it. And actually by exceeding your goal, you start to trend better on Indiegogo. You start to get more people interested who are discovering this and strangers basically to support your project. So I would recommend setting as low a goal as possible. Let's just say, in order to make our particular project happen, we're going to raise uh, $15,000 there and the minimum is 500. The next is the title. The title is the first thing that you're going to see when you come to a campaign. I would recommend having your title either have a promise um, or explain who this is for or what this is. So for example, the promise here is that this is the longest lasting, longest lasting, that's a promise, wireless earbuds. So you, it immediately, it conveys the brand, it conveys what it is, their wireless earbuds, and also in the title, you know that they're longest lasting. Another project that I worked on was Hupnos, this Indiegogo campaign. Um, I designed basically the page and we also did all the titling and that kind of stuff. So for their title was Hupnos, self-learning sleep mask to stop snoring. And this is kind of what it's used for. It's to stop snoring. And it's also a self-learning sleep mask. So say what it is and say either who it's for or what it's for. And this project ended up raising um, a little bit over $100,000. So this is a really good format to go by. Uh, for now, I'm just going to title this Finding My Birth Mother Book. This is this is a book that I actually currently right now, and I'll get into that in a little second, am, uh, have on Amazon. So this is a new thing. I'm just doing this as like a placeholder there. I would, I would probably actually spend about 30 minutes to 40 minutes actually thinking about a few different title ideas. So different titles that you can actually consider, um, and, and that's how you're going to pick the best one. So brainstorm a few different title ideas. The campaign description. 
going back to the the Hypnos Indigo campaign, that description is expanding on the promise and sharing more of what this thing does. So this product analyzes and gently corrects you or your partner's snoring patterns. Then it says the, the outcome. The outcome is wake up feeling refreshed. So use this description to sort of expand a little bit on um, whatever it is your title is here and just sort of help with this I'm going to let's duplicate this tab I'm gonna go to my new book I'm gonna just draw right from the copywriting that I have there to make this go a little bit easier so this is my my book Little Thumb of America this is an adoption story like no other and you're gonna get the complete untold story of how I found my birth mother in El Salvador. And it was actually a crazy wild story where I only had a photo and I went back to El Salvador and passed out this photo and uh, basically was able to get some information on her. So you find here, okay, now we need to cut this down. You can see the importance of fitting a lot of value into a very short amount of time. Just for now, I'm gonna say, get the complete untold story just so we can move along with the tutorial. Uh, campaign card image. This is the image that basically is gonna represent your campaign. Um, I would recommend having this image be something that's emotionally evocative. You're going to fill out your location. You're going to go into the category in which you're going to launch in. Make sure you select the accurate category. And um, also the campaign duration. Typically, 30 days is a very standard campaign duration. If you have good marketing, you might want to extend this to 45 days. You can also extend the campaign with Indiegogo. So I would recommend setting a campaign duration of 30 days. If you really have um, you're looking to create a lot of urgency, maybe as low as 20, but uh, 30 days is usually a good duration there. And after you, you know, save this, you can always review the campaign or you can preview it um, as you're leading up to, to the launch here. So you can save the preview campaign. You can also have the pre-launch page and these different things. So I want to go through each of these, and this is going to be a more comprehensive tutorial. So the first thing is the content. The content is the first thing that people are seeing when they come to the page. So in this case, it's the pitch video. It's the video here that people get to see, they get to watch this. And that video, I have some other videos out there on YouTube on how to create an effective crowdfunding video. But basically, you're going to want to show the product, show it being used in different environments, showing people use it, um, and sort of sell that um, experience of how is this going to change your life? How does this product fit into your life? What can you use it for? Who is it for? That's what you're using the video for. I would recommend that video being around three minutes long, no longer than four minutes. Um, I would say at the very least, probably like two to two and a half minutes would be a good length for the video. You then have an image overlay if you would like. This is kind of the thumbnail, the thumbnail that people see when they come to the video here. I would have that thumbnail, number one, obviously include the product in it, but if possible, also have someone using it or reacting to it or showing people, um, showing the outcome of using the product. That thumbnail, very similar to YouTube, will actually determine how many people click on that and actually watch that video. So make sure there's, there's almost a hidden promise there if you're gonna find out what this thing is or you're gonna learn a little bit about that. In addition, you have the, the campaign overview image, um, if we were to you know have that here, it would, it would be like right around here when the, when the campaign is live. Let's see if I can pull up another um, example here so you guys can see what that would look like. But um, the, the, again, this is all about branding. This is all about showing people a continuity of your brand and continuing to deliver on the promises that you're making. So for example, with their cover image, they have some text here and it sort of gets into some of those main features. It's a wireless waterproof earbuds and power bank. There it is there. I think they could improve this if they were showing people using it, that, that image there. Um, this is sort of another image showing what this looks like. And then it gets into using some really cool, actually um, little emojis, what the different benefits are. And I would, I would also recommend copying this format, um, having a little bit of the description here and then having some bullet points that go into the actual um, functionality or the benefits of the campaign. I want to take a second to introduce you to the sponsor of today's video, and that is Fulfill Right. Fulfill Right is a turnkey solution for helping you get the products out there to your customers and to your backers. Whether you're doing a Kickstarter campaign or an Indigo campaign, eventually you're going to have to do order fulfillment and get those rewards out there into the hands of your backers. So what these guys do is they basically offer a streamlined service for you and they take all that headache away. I highly recommend outsourcing this element of your campaign because it's going to make everything easier in the future. If you want to learn more about Fulfill Right, I'm going to include a link down down below in the description of this YouTube video. But in addition, you can also check it out on the web at F-U-L-F-I-L-L-R-I-T-E.com and you can learn more there. Thanks for listening and let's get back to the video. So let's go back here to our um, description. The story, um, the story is the most important 
aspect aside from the video. The story is really what you're using. It's kind of like a sales page almost, talking about the various features, the benefits, uh, getting into the functionality. The, the, if you are familiar with my work, the functionality is probably the last most important, but it is super important for getting someone to logically believe what it is that you're doing. So for example, there are a lot of promises here. There's the wireless waterproof earbuds and power bank, and this is the longest lasting um, earbuds. So with functionality, you're gonna just, you're gonna explain essentially logically, why is it that these are the longest lasting earbuds? Is a new technology been invented? Why is it that, that these are longer than anything else that has been created on the planet earth? And, and also um, how is it that they made it waterproof? You, know, you get into the functionality, you can talk a little bit more about that and people will believe the claims and the promises that you have. So this story is very fancy wording just for the actual campaign page. Most campaign pages are very image heavy. They have gifts. Um, they showcase different aspects of the product. You also use titles like this to, to go through the page. Um, if you're interested in having me assemble your page or you want to talk a little bit more about that, you can always contact me with a coaching call and we can get a little bit more in depth into your page. You also have the um, frequently asked questions here. Some of the questions might be related to your product. Um, why, what, how do you use this? Who is this for? Um, you might have more technical questions there. So also using the FAQ section there. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the perks. Perks are essentially rewards. So when you have a perk or a reward, this is what people are going to see here. They're gonna see the actual image of the perk. They're gonna see when they click this, what they're getting here. So they're getting you know, 50% off, or uh, this is off retail price, the various benefits, what's included in terms of the items. And also you have a limited time perk here, which is pretty cool. You can also have a secret perk. So these are some really great ways to make your perk stand out. Number one is with the titling. Number two is when you have the actual copy here, um, that's really great marketing opportunity. Number three, of course, the images, the things that you're seeing. So this is, you can obviously see here, this is the regular price and this is the actual price that you're getting. So it adds a little bit of value to that overall um, image. And then here you have also the, the scarcity or the urgency of this particular limited time promotion. These are all different things you can do with Indiegogo. So you can create a new perk if you want to. I'm not gonna get super detailed into this. You can show this on your campaign page. It could be hidden. You set the price, you set the retail price. By setting the retail price, you're going to get that really fancy, this is X percent off um, the retail price there. You also then have the title of the perk. What does this include? What is the description? What are the images? How many are available? Estimated delivery date. Um, so some, some really uh, great stuff here that you can basically get into. Now, items, we'll, we'll discard this for right now. These are some of the items that you are offering to backers when they claim a perk. So an item is like a, actually a product that you're basically listing what the items are, what are the things that are included. It just kind of goes a little bit more in depth into the, the items there. And also you can see like some of the different variations there with the perk. I'll let you explore that a little bit on your own time. Let's move on to team. The team are the people obviously that are working on this project. Now I would recommend having a team around you if you're going to be launching a campaign and that team could simply be even people just helping you out but it could also be people like myself coaches marketing consultants people that are helping you because it's a lot of work to assemble a product like this um, let's also let's explore some of the other projects that are out there on indiegogo really quickly here so even looking at some other ones um, people that have raised, you know, even twenty nine thousand dollars. Let's go this one, the the Slim Cam. These are both funding projects. Um, it's a lot of work to get together the images, to get together all this writing, to get together the the video. Um, this is this is a lot of work for one person, and also doing things like media outreach. So you'll see the best projects typically have a team that is surrounding them that's actually doing this launch. So the reason why they're able to raise you know three hundred thousand dollars is because they have a team of people that are helping them with the manufacturing, that are helping them with the marketing, um, and that team is what enables them to do something that's larger than themselves. It's a, it's a really neat uh, concept there. So let's go back here. After you fill out the team, you can get more into some of these other details like the funding type. So the funding type, there's two different funding types. There's flexible funding and there's fixed funding. Fixed funding is basically what Kickstarter is. It's all or nothing. Um, all or nothing funding is you. if you have a $10,000 goal, you have to hit or exceed that goal in order to actually um, keep the money that you've raised. So it's kind of think of it as like you have to basically uh, hit or exceed this. 
And the reason why you might want to do that is if you have a minimum order quantity, let's just say, that you have to hit in order to make this project happen, then fixed funding is the way to go. If you're going to be able to, um, even let's just say you have a uh, $10,000 goal and you only raise $2,000, um, can you still ship out and make good on the promises that you have with the rewards and perks? If the answer is yes, then you could use flexible funding. So that way, even if you don't hit your goal, you're still able to keep the funds that you have raised. So it really comes down to your fulfillment and also don't just say, hey, I want to keep the money. Um, also think about the backers. Maybe they want to make sure that um, you're actually going to deliver on these rewards and they know you need a certain amount of funding for that. If you're only asking for like $1,000 and you're trying to make a really fancy tech product, people might kind of sense, eh, this doesn't really add up. You know, He's going to need a little bit more funding to get this actually in order. So make sure you are realistic with this and that's going to help a lot in the um, post-campaign phase. Now taxes, um, that's another subject I'm not going to get into here, but um, you can look a little bit more in into this and also the, the currencies that you'll be raising for and all of that kind of stuff. Now, when it comes to the dashboard, you also have extras here. So you have like a draft campaign. You can create that and you can share this with your friends and family so you, they can give you some feedback on the campaign as you're going live or people like myself, coaches um, and consultants in the industry who can give you feedback on your on your project page, Facebook share image, marketing images. Uh, you also have a custom URL. I recommend installing Google Analytics. This is great analytics data. Uh, make sure your marketer does that for you. And also Facebook tracking. This is the most important, I would say, having a Facebook page pixel on your campaign page. This is so important because you're going to be able to retarget the people that come to the page and you're going to be able to continue to get donations. Just clicking here, you can also see there's a lot of different Facebook pixels already on this page. So make sure you install a Facebook pixel and make sure you install Google Analytics, other stuff, you can have a video gallery, image gallery, etc. And finally, in demand is basically where after you have successfully raised money, you can then go into the in-demand program, our marketplace on Indiegogo, and you can continue to raise funds and you can continue to ship this, this project out um, to people around the world. So these are basically finished campaigns that have successfully raised money um, and then they join the in-demand category. And now they are basically um, shipping this product out. It's kind of almost like a, an online store if you think about it. Uh, I'll let you you know, go into this and explore some of these different projects and some of the ones that are also like in different phases of the, of the campaign, I urge you to. But um, essentially, it's like an online store. When you are in in-demand, um, people are able to go and they're actually able to buy this project, continue to, to own it. And um, I think it's really neat that you're, you're able to do that. So it's, it's, it's very similar to just having a Shopify store where people can continue to support this project if you're in, in demand and it can continue to, to go from there. Here are some examples of production ready campaigns um, and some of the, the projects that are in the in demand program. So um, let's, let's take a look at this one. And let's take a look at uh, this one. So this project is in the in-demand program. They basically had a successful Indigo campaign, and now they are continuing to raise money via Indiegogo. So you can actually pledge to this, and it will impact the amount of funding that they have raised. Same goes for this one. Um, the cool thing about being in the in-demand program is that basically you are maintaining the social proof around your project. If you've raised $100,000 and new people are coming to that page, they see the success there. They already see the comments on your page. They already see all the social proof and the media mentions, all that. So it's a, it's a ripe opportunity to convert a complete stranger into a buyer or into a backer. So I urge you, In Demand is a great program. And also a lot of Kickstarter campaigns actually join the In Demand program uh, because after running a successful Kickstarter campaign, they then can import that data onto Indiegogo and they can then have all that social proof and they can continue to raise funds via Indiegogo. These are the major components of launching a campaign. You know, you can learn more here. Um, also, when you're when you're looking here, like the pre-launch page, and you can review the the campaign there. So, if if you want to, you know, you can spend I would say an hour to an hour and a half. You can design a landing page here as a, as a, in a pre-launch page. Um, these different things, but I, I would recommend um, spending at least an hour to sink your teeth into this. 
and um, to, to get familiar with this, this dashboard a little bit yourself because you're going to be referencing this a lot throughout your Indiegogo campaign. And in addition, if you do not feel comfortable doing this yourself, take a second to check out the link down below and book a coaching call with me because I can, number one, um, give you a lot of great feedback on your project. I've seen so many different campaigns over the years. I've been in this business since 2012. Um, I can also give you some advice and strategies and tips and these things and resources you should be checking out. And in addition, we can, we can talk about and explore whether or not um, some of my services might be helpful to you when you're launching your project. And you can learn a little bit more about those. I hope you liked today's video. If you did, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to this YouTube channel for more in-depth content like this, and leave a comment down below if you have any questions.